Wow, the time really does fly by in May. <laughs> I can't believe I'm back doing another Gardening Week video. Anyway, it was a busy day on Monday. I had some friends around and their daughter and we got a lot done on the plot actually. So I cleared one of the polytunnel beds uh, and that got winter lettuces in it and they were kind of getting past their best but also we just have so much lettuce right now we just didn't need it and so I got tomatoes planted down there and so now I've got three quarters of the polytunnel planted with tomatoes and cucumbers and their various interplants and I'm particularly pleased with the beetroot because the beetroot is looking great we, we've only got maybe one week maybe two weeks of beetroot left in store and yeah the beetroots are pretty good I think they're ready for harvest if I wanted to harvest them but I'm not going to harvest them yet let's let them bulk up a little bit more one thing I noticed last year about beetroot is that when it goes to seed, it doesn't really matter. The roots are still fine, uh, at least for the first you know, month or so. They don't seem to go woody. Um, yeah, they're just as nice and sweet as, as they always were. I don't know how long it takes for them to degrade once they start going to seed, but certainly for a few weeks, it's not an issue. So I also took advice from one of my viewers uh, from last week, I think, and planted uh, dwarf French beans down the front of the tomatoes and I quite like that idea as an interplant because of the timing so the, the dwarf French beans will be finishing just as I'm ready to plant my catch crop of Asian greens and have more Asian greens out in low tunnels and coal frames and things uh, for sort of autumn and winter but that crop planted in August should see me through uh, until October, which is when I'll clear these beds and get them replanted for winter. So I, I'm really quite pleased with that in concept. Obviously, you've got to try it and see how it goes. And in the other bed down here, which is not prepared yet, because it's still got a nice crop of uh, joy choy in it, and parsley and a last harvest of celery, uh, that bed I think I'm going to plant with those like little Paris... Uh, Parisian, I think they are, I'll put it up, I <laughs> can't remember the details, they're the little kind of radish-like carrots and apparently they're super sweet and I love like carrots in my salads and so I think they might take the place of radishes in, so in midsummer. I'm hoping so because I don't really like radishes in summer and so I was planning to stop growing them and you know thinking what shall I replace them with in the salad mixes and I think those little radish like carrots are going to be the thing. We also finished like 95% of the carrots and it's perfect carrot sowing weather at the moment. It's warm, in fact it's really warm and it's showery and carrots seeds they really don't like to dry out and so they either need constant watering you know, every other day, maybe every day even in summer. And, uh, or they need covering with something like hessian or, you know, dual layer of fleece or something like that to lock the moisture in. Some people even put wood down. I don't like wood because I find that slugs go underneath it and slugs love carrot seedlings. Uh, or you want showery weather. So we've got showery weather. So that's the easiest of all those options. And so I've got my summer carrot bed all germinated and thinned and they are looking really lovely and then I've got my autumn carrot bed we sowed that yesterday a mix of Touchon and rainbow carrots and that will see us in just into winter so in, in no December and then I've also sown all of the late winter and spring carrots so we're pretty much fully planted. I sometimes just sow a little contingency crop in the back garden if I have a little bit of space um, and just for snacking and for when the kids come round and all of that sort of thing but it's not a very important crop for me but yeah if I have the space it's nice to have a few carrots growing fresh in the garden. And we also got, yeah we did a lot, another bed of peppers in. So I've now got three out of five beds of peppers planted and I'm really pleased with the way that they're looking. I've got a nice succession going. So in the first early bed, those peppers are close to ripening. 
maybe one, two weeks away from ripening, something like that. So they're going to be around the end of May or early June, the first of those. Um, I'm only harvesting chilli peppers at home and then I've kind of, you know, they should be staged. So the first bed, as I say, will be kind of late May, June. Then the next one will come on stream late June, early July, and then the next one, etc., etc. So, and then of course, they'll all kind of flow through in waves. And so the first one will start, har we'll start harvesting that one again uh, later on. Now, obviously they always, you know, you get a continuous harvest from peppers. So this idea of a wave doesn't make total sense. What I find is that even though you do get a continuous harvest, they do kind of come in like a flush. So the first flush is the one I'll be harvesting off the first earlies in late May and June. And then you get the odd one, but then you get loads more coming in like a second flush. So that's the way that it seemed to work for me. mentioned, I've got a lot of um, lettuce at the moment. I've got one harvest left on the allotment and that will be next Sunday. And then I'll be totally reliant on what we've got in the garden. Uh, but I have got a kind of contingency which I interplanted into the collect bed. The reason I've done this contingency is that we do sometimes get cab uh, lettuce root aphid uh, in the back garden. I've never had it on the allotment. I grow a lot of lettuce on the allotment. And so I like to have just a little bit of lettuce in reserve just in case we get uh, that lettuce aphid. Uh, we don't normally get it really early in the year, but again, I, you know, I'm just when you're self-sufficient you just it's all about contingency so you know i don't think i can go wrong hopefully we'll see so then on tuesday we did a lot of work debbie did a lot of work really in the front garden and so that is now all pretty much all cleared and ready for replanting so that is going to look great uh, in a month or so's time and I'm just gap filling on the allotment now. So I've got very little extra space. If I've just got a few seedlings and things like that, I might sacrifice a, a few plants that aren't doing so well and put new plants in. Uh, or I might be, for example, harvesting some calabrese out of my calabrese bed. And then I'm not going to wait for the side shoots. I'm going to put another plant in because I know I'm going to have loads of calabrese later on in the month. So there's just not a lot of point waiting for side shoots. Uh, when you know you're going to be in abundance, it's better to plant something you're going to be a bit short of, like cauliflowers or something like that. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to get all that done. And finally, for Tuesday, I'm filling my compost bins. Now, one of the benefits, really, of growing over winter uh, and all through spring is I have abundant greens at this time of year. So, as I said, like loads of lettuce, loads of chard, I've just cleared my chard bed, for example, um, and you know, just loads of Asian greens, just loads of brassicas, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and that allows me to mix in all my stable bedding with new greens, to keep the temperature high, kill all those weed seeds, accelerate the decomposition of the wood. And so I'm hoping that I've got two cubic meters of compost made already this year so that i've never been so far ahead and just a little bit more discipline on my part somebody mentioned about my supposed discipline if they knew anything about my personal life they would know i have got very little discipline i'm afraid finally as i said i cleared the child bed and what i've also got is i've got some um shop bought uh, oh, what it's called ginger and what I did was I, I put it in a big glass bottle and wet it and then put wet kitchen rolls on top of it I saw this on a YouTube video and that is meant to sort of stimulate it into growth uh, put it in a nice warm place so I put it on a sunny windsill keep the kitchen roll warm uh, sorry <laughs> keep the kitchen roll wet and so that it keeps the ginger nice and wet but not lying in water and it seems to work um, it is all starting to shoot now and that is much earlier than i previously managed to get ginger to shoot and what i find here in my climate is that if i kind of leave it to its natural pace it's too slow 
and by the time it's ready um, it doesn't have enough growing period in this polytunnel to get a really good harvest so I thought if I can try and accelerate it so that it's shooting and ready to plant out right at the beginning of June then that'd be great so it's looking as, a, as if it's on target for that the ginger's in big pieces at the moment I'll be chopping those up uh, once the shoots have formed um, and then I'm planting it just down here under my trestle table where I can create a little kind of high humidity bubble for it but right now I'm warming the soil so I've watered the soil really well I've covered it with bubble wrap and so that means that the soil when the, when the ginger gets planted it will be planted into moist uh, really warm soil which hopefully is exactly what it needs so Debbie's made a start on planting the front garden and um, we've got Mikado Asian spinach so this is the type of spinach that doesn't bolt in here we've got the summer brassicas in here we're sowing less kales actually in summer this year and more for autumn and winter and then we've got celeriac green garlic overwintered onions of which most of them are going to seed a few more asian spinach red cabbages alternate this one is red drumhead and there's also red fugo and they kind of alternate as we go around and um, we've got three little gooseberry cuttings from that gooseberry plant there which we want to move but we don't want to move it until we've got these cuttings established we don't know what that is it's kind of a volunteer but uh, I think it's going to end up being a calabrese and quite a nice one by the look of it and yeah so it's a good start it's going to look great when it's a bit more advanced so it's Thursday and I've really struggled to get the chard to grow well this year for some reason I don't know what's been going on with it neglect on my part almost certainly but anyway I planted this little bed out which is enough chard for us and this bed is only going to be suitable for the summer and early autumn harvest because it doesn't really get the sun as you can see it's two o'clock and it's only just getting the sun now but it will get it until close to sunset so it's not so bad and we've moved all the chili peppers uh, onto the kitchen windowsill and there's a couple of tomato plants there as well and it looks really great I think um, Debbie really loves it um, being surrounded by uh, growing things and it's going to look really colourful fairly soon we popped down the plot and had to take some extra footage of the flower border and the Jerusalem artichokes on Debbie's plot so I got to practice my steady hand TV footage camera skills <laughs> I'm not sure how well I did but uh, you can judge for yourself had a really nice bike ride a couple of hours and then finally I've got the geraniums planted out so they can look lovely they always look really nice at the bottom of the garden just gives it a bit of a splash of colour and tomorrow Friday I will probably be taking these field beans out and just harvest the tips and uh, yeah I want to get the brassicas in yeah three great big bags of greens to go to the allotment for composting and almost weed free no dig beds this is my one of my rare experiences of uh, Charles Dowding's kind of weed free concept on the allotment is <laughs> is never weed free mare's tail bindweed couch grass goodness knows every perennial weed you can think of so I'm also starting to take out these spring cabbages and I love them when they go to seed because I love all of these tender small leaves that you get absolutely gorgeous and I've got a nice big container full of those and also those off the uh, Pentland Brig
and the Pentland Brie are kind of worth having le left in the garden just for the for the flowers because they do make the prettiest display in spring but again they're starting to come out now because they're getting cabbage aphid actually just use my weed burner to just fry all the cabbage aphid that I could see and uh, it actually worked really well and it's just kind of killed it so I didn't want when I take the plants out I didn't want the cabbage aphid all kind of flying away and infesting other plants but as you can see here again it's worked pretty well just whoops just fries them so we're all planted up now I've got six red cabbages really nice space in between them so they're going to be really big hopefully uh, five graffiti cauliflowers those are the purple ones and there's a red cabbage in the middle and then there's four calabrese with a cauliflower in the middle so I'll try to do it so that it looks nice and the coke cans hopefully will deter the birds and the cats as per usual and I've just harvested the coke cans from the rest of the garden so we don't need very many now since everything is fully grown and I'll just need a few just for the carrots which I'm not sowing yet so nice to have the covers off the covers just get stored neatly out of the way down the side of the polytunnel so I'm just doing the harvest at the moment and it's pretty clear that the spring glut is pretty much over and that is because I'm rapidly clearing all the beds and getting them replanted with the summer and autumn and the winter crops now and you know I have a lot of space committed to those later season crops and so I just don't have enough space to keep you know a high harvest rate going all the way through spring but the nice thing about this time of year is that all the new season crops, the early ones, are starting to come through. So the peas and the beans and the courgettes and all those sorts of things, as well as the flowering brassicas and the like. So it's not a bad time of year. It's just that, you know, the diet is richer, but the size of the harvest is smaller. Anyway, I'll show you this last harvest, which kind of represents the spring glut. And then next week you'll see a radically reduced harvest size uh, as we head into almost the summer. So as I mentioned earlier, this is the last of the big spring harvests before the summer crops start arriving in uh, a few weeks time. So we'll, harvest volume should dip down. I mean, I'm hoping that I'll still fill this table but uh, it won't be quite as lush as this and it'll also have all of the salad harvest on it. So I'll just talk you through what we've got. So we've got the early baking potatoes. These are meant to be new potatoes, but it turns out that uh, I must have got them mixed up and I actually planted some cara, which are early main crop potato. So the new potato crop wasn't quite as big as I was expecting it to be. But it's still respectable and we've got plenty more to come. Asparagus, really good harvest of that. New season carrots, salad onions. These are the big salad onions. Um, these are the ones I'm having because I like the beautiful little purple lila ones. Then over here we've got <laughs> the start of the crazy kind of overwintered onion harvest of which a lot of them are going to seed now, unfortunately, because it's been such a warm spring. Still got a few stored onions, a few of them starting to sprout now. Loads and loads of um, radish, stacks of green garlic, and getting loads more of that to come. We're out of dried garlic now really beautiful brassica harvest now so we've got all these lovely early kales spring cabbages kales more kales more spring cabbages 
and then the last of the spring Asian greens and we won't have Asian greens now until late summer probably and the last of the celery from the polytunnel and we won't have any celery now for well about a month I should think um, first of the peas and the French beans <laughs> rather pitiful harvest but it, uh, it's still nice to have broad beans just starting to get the second early broad beans so the first earlys are still in good production second early is just the first few beans off those discovered some carrots in the fridge so these are stored carrots from last year's kind of may sowing i guess They're still in great condition yakon harvested in november stored in the shed spinach this is either the last harvest of true spinach or we might have one small harvest uh, still to come and then i don't think we'll probably have spinach for a week or two until the summer spinaches are ready they're not far off but no, they won't be ready next week and a few smoothie mixes and then these are the last of the field bean tops Good harvest to those, they've been an amazing crop all through the year, but uh, everything comes to an end. And so now we'll just have broad bean tips and way less than this amount of broad bean tips. So you can see big changes coming next week. Kind of looking forward to it really. It's nice to have a bit of a rest. Summer is our kind of rest period really. When it comes to gardening, very little to do, just water and harvest. So it's a salad table. All the greens are lettuce at this time of year. I don't have any pak choy or tat soy, unfortunately, but still a nice mix. So we've got about six different types of lettuce leaf. We've got all the salad carrots all these really nice radishes purple salad onions and salad onion tops the white salad onions and salad onion tops and the cucumbers which are looking really great third week of cucumbers picking about 20 or so every week and that is pretty much it i think and then to that we had grapes and tomatoes so my name is steve this is the seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel and i'll see you soon